Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Vote. That is Drew Galloway. We are here on this Wednesday talking a little K State football. And we know that spring ball got started yesterday. First practice took place for K State. Chris Kleiman spoke to the media then on Monday to kind of get everything prepped and set the stage. And throughout the next month now, we're going to get a pretty good dose of K State football content and insight because there's going to be a, you know a couple chunks of practices that can be viewed uh, by the media and then also Chris Klein and his staff will have uh, various press conferences throughout the month so we'll get to hear from all of the key assistants and kind of where the development of certain guys are at which is going to be impactful but one of the things that will be a big deal when it comes to the spring is we know that there are going to be high school recruits on campus. That is a big deal. Drew and I have talked about that already. But there will be another transfer portal window that comes open at the end of spring ball. And last year, K-State lost a couple of guys after spring, but they also added some guys late. And we know, based off of kind of what Chris Kleiman said on Monday, that there are some holes on this team that, you know, it's not like dire, we got to find this type of guy, but I think they would probably like to or they would be better suited if they did. One of those being quarterback, where Chris Kleiman talked about having to, you know, build kind of the depth behind Avery Johnson and, and all that other stuff. So we'll kind of dive into it here and talk a little bit about what K State might look for in the transfer portal this spring because there are needs. And then there's also the question of, okay, what is the type of player that you can actually add when you get into the late portal window? Uh, so it's going to be fascinating to discuss. So, Drew, I mean, quarterback is obviously one of them, but you, know, you D.Y., have covered some other options that might be out there that K-State needs to look into. So what is it, the, the entire need that K-State would be looking for if the right guy's there in the uh, spring portal? Uh, so outside of quarterback, which it, it's funny to hear a coach say, or at least like hint at, like, we don't need a starting quarterback. Like we want a backup, which, which does make sense because Jacob Knuth and Blake Barnett haven't played at, <laughs> at the power five level yet. So you, at the you college like, level even. <laughs> yeah. It's so like you, you would want some experience behind them and to be able to, feel at least a little bit better if there was a scenario where Avery Johnson went down. Uh, the other one that really kind of pops out to me, uh, just in terms of they really wanted one during the uh, the winter window. So I, I imagine that they'll target one uh, during the spring as linebacker, specifically probably a Mike, uh, because you're thin on experience there as well. Uh, we still don't know. Uh, the status of like what Jake Clifton is going to end up doing. Um, Austin Romaine is still a young player. Bo Palmer doesn't have a ton of experience either, even as an older player. So you probably want a guy that has played a little bit. And I guess add in, add in Terry Kirksey, who was hurt all of last season. So the, the Mike spot is pretty unproven. You know, they have two really, really solid guys at the Will and Sam. Uh, with Austin Moore and Desmond Purnell. So you probably want another linebacker. They wanted another receiver during the winter. So it will, it'll be interesting to see if they attack that or because I feel like a receiver is a, the position where you could say that you probably wanted one, another one during the winter, but after the spring, I could see them saying that they probably don't want one because I think that this is, that's the position with where the young guys you've heard are starting to really turn the corner. And especially with what Chris Kleiman said in the press conference on Monday, that they're really trying to simplify things. And, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, that, that's what the Chiefs did with their wide receivers. And uh, by the end of the season, the Chiefs wide receivers were actually like capable. So it's not, it's not the worst thing to simplify things to get your best guys on the field. Feels then, like a, a sad low bar if uh, we're just wanting the the K State receivers to be the comparable college version of the Chiefs receivers. I would like to dream a little bigger than that, Drew. Oh, Even well, though K State does have the college Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, uh, the greatest I, of all time. I don't I don't know that I want. A, I don't know why I want Rasheed Rice as the number one, and then relying on MVS and McCole Hardman. Uh, see, I, I think that they can be 
pretty solid and that room can be good. I, I just think that there was a lot of things in the offense last year that were a little complicated, especially for some of the younger players. So I think that if they simplify things, that they'll be fine. And then the the last spot for me, because it's not like Casey has a ton of spots, is probably more of a best player available spot where if there's this one player at any position that's just like, ooh, we have to add him. Like, I, I imagine that that's what Casey will do. Well, so you bring that up. What What is the caliber of player that could be there and available for K-State? Like, being realistic about it, because this is not like we talked about what comes across in December when, okay, you got a guy like Easton Kilty on the offensive line who is this highly sought-after offensive lineman, Dante Cephas, a wide receiver that you bring in that, you know, there was some good buzz last year, kind of needs to build it back up after uh, one season at Penn State. The spring is a little bit dicier because if you think of the players that K-State brought in last year, uh, I think maybe the only true like transfer portal guy was Tyler Neelome from SEMO, and then everybody else they got in late, they were like JUCO guys. So what is the the realistic possibility of players that are out there? It, it's kind of hit and miss with the spring window, and I mean, that that's just kind of how it goes because um, – you're probably better suited to have more spots open in the winter, which case they did. And like, I, I don't anticipate them adding like a ton of guys in the spring window, because like you said, like they, they've been very apt to using the Juco's during the spring. So I wonder if that's an Avenue that they go down. Uh, but there are some, there are some gems that come out of the spring window. I mean, uh, Reggie Stubblefield was a spring transfer portal window player. And um, I believe that um, K-State has added at least one other productive player in the spring. So, I mean, there there is talent that is in uh, the spring window. It's just, it, it's harder to find a guy that like that case eight really wants, which is the player that has succeeded at the lower level. That's coming up to the power five level. Yeah. It's just, I, I like, I don't want anybody to get their expectations sky high for what case State could do in the portal. Cause they have been successful. I think in the portal and finding needs, you know, since Chris Kleiman has been here, but what could be there for them this time around is a little bit tougher, specifically talking about quarterback though. It's a weird spot for K-State to be in where, I, I mean, if they have to roll with what they have right now, that's just what they have to do. But there is, I think, no doubt now that they would be open to another guy. But it's just such a tricky spot because how are you going to find a guy that is better than Jacob Knuth, that is in the transfer portal and is willing to know that I'm not going to be the starting quarterback here possibly ever or for sure at least until you know two years have gone by? Yeah, it, that's the one that I think is the trickiest because you can talk yourself into any other position on the field and say, okay, like if they really wanted to grab a transfer, like you can at least sell playing time. But at, at quarterback, there's one of you that's on the field. So that's one where I'm, I'm really interested to see how K-State navigates it. I wonder if they grab like an FCS level quarterback that might be like entering their senior season and be like, Hey, do you want at least a chance to play power for power for football and move up? So I'm really interested to see how that works out because it's like you said, like K State has a clear cut starting quarterback. It's going to be tough to convince a transfer that that is the right spot for them when they aren't going to be <laughs> when they're going to their best at best their quarterback too. What do you think the chances of a, a of a running back that could come in and be uh, a more proven number two option for a guy like DJ Giddens? Because that feels like maybe one of those where you know running back is a position that if the if the skill set is there, the right team can find the right usage for you. And that seems like a spot where you might have a guy that whether it's a lower level guy that wants to move up or somebody that's disgruntled and wants to move on somewhere else. 
could realistically maybe be one of the more high end options. Is that something that you could see as a possibility? I, I could see it as a possibility, and I've kind of, excuse me, uh, wondered about K State adding a running back. But the more that you keep hearing from K State in these press conferences and from other sources, it seems like K State's pretty content with what they have at running back. Personally, I would not. I would be shocked more if they add like a Juco player and just have an older guy in the room with DJ uh, than adding a transfer portal uh, running back. I I just think that a Juco guy kind of makes sense because that's another one where you have guys that have barely played or not played at the college level behind DJ Giddens. So it, it just makes sense to me with numbers and just to have like an added maturity in the room to add a, had like a juco running back yeah it'll be interesting to to see and kind of how k-state manages it and this is just you know another one of those things that when it comes to to building a roster now and you, you have this option and it can be nice but it's probably also another level of stress knowing that there is the ability to make your roster deeper and stronger but it's just going to be a lot of hard work to find that guy and it, it may never present itself uh at this time of year I'll add in too that that if the best player available slot that I talked about ends up being a running back, I I wouldn't be shocked. But I also wouldn't be shocked based on what we keep hearing that they're just like, huh, we're good with what we have at running back. And and I really like what they have at running back. It's just hard because you don't know what a lot of those guys can do at the college level yet outside of DJ Giddens. It'll be interesting to see where K-State goes with it, but uh, they're just now starting everything to kind of fully understand what they might have and where guys are with their development getting ready for the 2024 season. So that will do it for Drew and I today. Uh, We'll be back on KSO tomorrow right here on the YouTube page, bringing you some more K-State football news and notes. And uh, head over to kstateonline.com and find anything you need on recruiting some spring football updates. DY's got some good nuggets over there. And then also, uh, if if you're sick in the head and you want to read about the K-State basketball team right now, uh, go for it. I guess you can do that. Or you can go talk about uh, about Shakegate that's going down between Bill Self and Jerome Tang, apparently. Uh, discuss that over on the Foundation or Premium Message Boards at K-State Online. So that will do it for Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. Back again tomorrow. Thanks for watching the KSO Show.